Next functional groups up here are ketones and aldehydes. Uh, whole chapter on these two, and they're very related, so that's why we're going to cover them together. So uh, both have a carbonyl, and your carbonyl here is a carbon oxygenable bond. We spell that carbonyl here. Some people say carbonyl, I say carbonyl. Uh, a ketone here is a carbonyl with carbon chains on both sides, and an aldehyde is a carbonyl with a carbon chain on one side and then a hydrogen on the other side. Or technically, formaldehyde is technically considered an aldehyde, and it's an aldehyde on both sides, so a hydrogen on both sides, no carbon chains attached to the carbonyl. Uh, but generally, aldehyde, one carbon chain, one hydrogen, ketones, two carbon chains. Let's take a look at naming them. So to name a ketone here, and we've got a couple of them here, uh, first thing I'm going to do is find the longest continuous carbon chain the ketone is attached to. So like in this case, that would be here. Now technically this methyl group up here could have been part of the longest chain and this one not. Same diff, they're equivalent, I just picked one. Uh, and in this case, then you want to number the chain to give the ketone carbonyl carbon the lowest possible number. So we'll name this one left to right here. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you can see the carbonyl carbon there's at three. That's the appropriate chain locator uh, designation for the ketone. Uh, and then also, obviously, we've got this methyl group attached to carbon six. So, and just like with all the other functional groups, we'll name the substituents first. So first thing we'll say is six methyl. So, and then here we've got a seven carbon chain, that's heptane. Uh, and then your suffix here is going to be O-N-E for ketones. So we'll say heptanone, and you can put the chain locator three in one of a couple of different places. So uh, one option here is to put it right before we say own. So we'll say 6-methylheptane-3-own, or you could put it in front of the entire parent chain. So 6-methyl-3-heptanone is your other option. Both are acceptable. All right, I just want to give you another example here. We've got a cyclic ketone. I just want to show you that there's nothing different with a cyclic ketone, but if you're naming it as a ketone, the big thing here is that the ketone is going to be located at carbon 1. So for a ring, you get to choose where 1 is. Uh, at least uh, we get to choose where 1 is. Uh, and for if you're naming it as a ketone, carbon 1 is the carbonyl carbon of the ketone. So uh, in this case, because it's going to be carbon number 1 if you're naming it as a ketone, you don't include the chain locator in the name for cyclic 1. So in this case, this is just cyclopentanone. Cool, and that's all there is to it. Now, if your ketone's not your most important functional group, if you're gonna name it as a substituent, uh, we'll refer to it as an oxo substituent, and we'll come across one of those in a little bit. So it turns out uh, aldehydes and ketones, aldehydes actually get the priority. So if you have both an aldehyde and a ketone, you name it as an aldehyde, and then you name the ketone as a substituent. We'll see one of these soon. So when naming an aldehyde, so if it's the main functional group, you're going to find the longest continuous carbon chain that the aldehyde is attached to. And so in this case, this is just a simple aldehyde. It's five carbons long, and you'll always number it in such a way when you're naming it as an aldehyde. The aldehyde's always at the end of the chain, so it's always going to be located at position one. And because it's always located at position one when you name it as an aldehyde, you don't include the chain locator. It's automatically given. That's what it's going to be. And so in this case, we're just going to say pentane. So, and then the suffix here is going to be al, so pentanal. And again, we don't say one pentanal or pentane one al. That chain locator is redundant because it has to be at carbon number one. So, if we have an aldehyde directly attached to a ring, and that's the bottom one here, and it has to be directly attached to that ring, the very carbonyl carbons directly attached to that ring, first thing you do is name the ring. So, in this case, five membered ring is cyclopentane. Cool, and then you just add the term carbaldehyde onto the end. So, seems a little, little bulky and cumbersome, but that's the way it goes. And there's a good reason for it, though. So, notice if we just said, like, cyclopentanal, that might sound like it has five carbons, but this is cyclopentane plus one more carbon, so carbaldehyde. So, it's six carbons, not just five. So, but that's what you do for cyclic aldehydes in this case. So one more thing, we won't see it in this chapter, but in the future, just like with ketones, we'll refer to the aldehyde as an oxo substituent when it's not the main functional group. Now up till this point, this is the most important functional group we've learned how to name up until this point in the, in the course. Uh, but in the next chapter, we'll learn some more that are even more important. And when we get to those, we'll come back and we'll name an aldehyde as a substituent rather than the main functional group. Uh, but for now, it's the most important one we know. So this example contains both a ketone and an aldehyde. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the aldehyde is the more important functional group. So in this case, we're going to name this as an aldehyde. And your longest continuous carbon chain that is part of the aldehyde is this guy. And that makes the aldehyde carbon carbon number one. And then we'll number the chain. 
So, and we see we've got the ketone at carbon number four. And in this case, we're going to name that ketone as a substituent. And it turns out both aldehydes and ketones get named as oxo substituents. That's why it works here. And so in this case, first thing we'll say is we'll name the substituent. So we'll say four oxo. And then again, pentanyl, the aldehyde is always at the end of the chain. So no chain locator is needed. We'll just say pentanyl. Cool. So that's 4-oxo-pentanyl, the IUPAC name. Again, when you have both a ketone and aldehyde, the aldehyde is the main chain. The ketone is just named as that oxo-substituent.